Hello and welcome to the second edition of Next Gen Gaming Podcast. I'm James Cullen and I'm joined by Luke Pinnock and Jordan Campbell as usual. And tonight we're going to be talking over a few different topics and then Luke is going to be hitting me and Jordan up with a few questions which we're unaware of. Um, so Luke, over to you and you can cover what we're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've got Pokemon Go, uh, which obviously you've, you've read everything about. There is a lot to know about it at the moment. Uh, we've got Quantum Break, which I'm really, really excited for. Looks like a great game. And yeah, then like you said, we've got a few questions, a few upcoming events as well, which which look quite interesting. So we'll start with Pokemon Go, mate. Um, what can you tell us about it? Okay, basically, so it was revealed last year, Pokemon Go is an augmented reality game being handled by developer Niantic, who had a game I've not played it. I don't know if yourself or Jordan has a game called Ingress, which was very much the same kind of thing. It's a real world game where you go out and you meet real people and you do stuff. Um, obviously, linking that into Pokemon sounds like the actual best thing ever. And the fact that you could go and like catch a Pokemon on the way to work certainly seems like a, like a tasty idea. Um, in terms of details, like you said, very thin on the ground at the moment. Uh, I think... I don't know if the battle system's going to be the same. Will you go out and will you battle strangers? The trailer was very vague and very CG and and showed people, you know, groups of people out fighting a Mewtwo in Times Square, which would obviously be fantastic. But your standard Pokemon battle system obviously won't work on that. So it'll be interesting to see, are they going to carry over your details, the kind of things you're looking at at tournament level? So do you do EV training and IV training? Are you going to be able to breed? I'm guessing you're going to be able to trade. Um and obviously there'll be special events across the globe, which will, I guess, encourage people to go and uh, catch them all, as it were, excuse the pun. So that is the basis of it. Uh, will anyone be picking this up at all? See, I, I'm quite interested in it. The only, like, the only drawback, the only thing I'm worried about with this sort of thing is the in-app purchases. Every single game at the moment on the marketplace, in-app purchases, and they're all driven yeah. by that. I, I appreciate that that's you know it's a nice bit of make, making money, um, charge like give the game away for free, charge a fortune. You know, a Pokeball was that going to be like ten quid, something stupid like that. But um, I'd I'd, rush, I'd I'd miss the days when it was you you pay for a game and that was it. That was a game you got it all. And I just worry with this sort of how things are at the moment. That it's it's just going to be driven by that, and you're not really going to enjoy it because you can be constantly having to spend money just to get involved. Yeah, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. On that point, uh, I've played the free-to-play Pokemon offerings on 3DS, of which there are three now. Pokemon Rumble World, which is also getting a retail release. Don't think it has over here yet. Pokemon Shuffle, which is also out on mobile. And Pokemon Picross. Um, those games do have in-app purchases. It's not an essential. So you get, uh, on Pokemon Shuffle, for example, you get a heart every half an hour. That allows you to play a level. So... Obviously, it's you know it's still a Nintendo franchise, but and the antic being given you know free reign to just do what they want with it in terms of the money side of things. Again, we don't really know at the moment. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, I say there's not been much about it, but it does it does seem interesting. I think it'd be a nice concept. I'm, I'm surprised they haven't done something sooner. Um, to be honest. I, th- I like the way they're going to get people involved and, you know, meeting up, battling, trading. I, th- I think people are going to, you know, want to travel around and, and look for something, you know, different Pokemon or, you know, meeting up with people to trade. I, th- I think it's good to get a social aspect in a game like that because, you know, I think that's what gaming should be about is to be the social side of things. Um, Matt, but what's oh, Matt, I should get that, kids that... out of the house. Might yeah, actually get kids yeah, to go exactly. outside and do something. Exactly, and I think could that be could that be quite a nice thing to go out? You know, if you've got kids, right? We're going to go out and hunt some Pokemon for half hour. Maybe there'll be a Machamp at the park. You know, beating the crap out of kids. Maybe not. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I think I think it's certainly interesting. It was revealed recently. I don't know if you remember. I think it was April Fool's Day last year, where Google Maps did a thing where they placed Pokemon like across the globe. Basically, you could find Pokemon all all across the world in different streets, and you could find them all, as it were. And actually, that was the inspiration to moving this. You know, getting this game on the go. So. 
uh, so thanks Google for chucking that in there. Yeah. Uh, one of my other concerns would be, obviously, Luke, you've said about in-app purchases. Now, I'm a I'm an iPhone owner, and my problem will be games rinse your battery as it is. An augmented reality game, uh, you know, you've got to have your camera on, and it, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure how it's going to work, but it is going to be battery destroying. Um, so I'm thinking maybe Android users might certainly get a bit more of a better experience. Can you imagine? Uh, you know, you're just about to catch something. Sorry, battery's gone. Um, it'll be it'll be soul <laughs> be destroying. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I've, I've got an Android, and I love it. But I, th- I think with any smartphone, battery is so bad. Like, it, I mean, iPhone especially. I feel sorry for you, but then you picked it. You're an idiot. Um, yeah, yeah. It's my bad. It's my bad. <laughs> it's lured me in now. Don't want to lose all my apps. But, uh, yeah. And again, so one thing I did forget to mention is there's also a little like wristwatch thing, which by Bluetooth works with your yeah. phone. Again, not many details shown on that. Um, could that be some kind of say if you did lose Barry, would like you have like temporary save data in there? We don't know, but I am excited for it. Uh, you know, I still play Pokemon X when I get my 3DS back. I still play Pokemon X regularly and and still enjoy the franchise, you know. So the only, the only thing that sort of strikes me as that that Bluetooth watch thing is it's going to be similar vein in the like the Apple watches and things like that. Is it going to cost a fortune? How necessary? How necessary is it going to be to the actual game itself? Mm. It, I I just worry it's going to be a lot of gimmicks and you can't really enjoy the game. It just it's just lots of little things that they haven't really cleared up. But is it? Is but it's it actually, Pokemon. Yeah, we got Pokemon, George, but. I want to play Pokemon. I don't want to be spending fifty quid to travel up to Bournemouth to find a an egg, an egg that hatches <laughs> and is a magic carp. Yeah, they are. How, how sad would you be if you got that in there? Oh, you know, people are going to get on that. True story. Uh, drove halfway across the country. Can't remember where but it was. Close. It was getting close to Wales with a friend who wasn't into Pokemon at all. We had a day off. I persuaded him to. Go. There was only certain game stores that were giving it away. Whereas nowadays, you get the uh, you get the download code, or you can do yeah. it by Wi-Fi anywhere. This was long before those days, and we drove like basically to Wales to get this Pokemon. And the website that I used at the time had posted the wrong date, and we went a day early, and uh, it was not on. And so I think in total we drove about three hundred miles for nothing. So uh, <laughs> there's a warning to anyone playing Pokemon Go and having that plan. Did you bother going back the next day or did you leave it? No, we have work next day. And he was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be absolutely devastated. Is there a date for it coming out or is it going to be like an E3 reveal thing again? I or actually is... recall seeing that there's going to be more details released soon. We're going to get more details before E3. But I would imagine um, E3 will be a big reveal. Will it tie into the NX? You know, what's going to happen? Will it work with Pokemon Bank, which for anyone who doesn't know, is the online box service which works across um, 3DS generation games and uh, and few games as they stated it. So we can see. Cool. Right, if you're happy, we'll move on to Quantum Break. I am happy because I will listen because I know <laughs> nothing about it whatsoever. I think that's, there's guns. That's, that's about as far as Yeah, there's a big goes. new trailer released not long ago, and it looks like, to me, it looks amazing. <laughs> Um, I can't really talk about it without talking about Alan Wake. Jordan has the complete opposite opinion of Alan Wake to what I have. I absolutely loved it. I thought it, the story was great. The characters were interesting. It was so, like the atmospheric side of it was fantastic. It was a really, really good game. It was challenging, I think, was, was the main thing. But I think single player games now really have to sort of be, you know, so good. Like, like I mean, like Fallout and uh, Witcher 3. Like, really, you know to make you want to not play online with your mates and things like that, to draw you away and, you know, sit in a hovel somewhere and play by yourself. Um, but Alan Wake did that for me. Uh, how did you get on with it, George? How did, what did you think of Alan Wake? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, go on, just, just spin a little story about it. Um, I can't remember it quite exactly now, but I remember, um, I remember moaning about it to you a lot, but I, I actually did go through the whole game and finish it off. Did you I just finish it. I did finish it, and I got a lot of achievements for it. But I can remember feeling like because they hyped up Alan Wake for so so long, so many years, and then when I got, finally got to play it, I thought this is this is 
pretty crap for the amount of time they spent <laughs> on it. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, it was it was good in some respects, and it, it did like I don't know. It did ha- have me um, wanting to finish the game. To be fair yeah. to it, it was it wasn't a a bad game. It was just me being a bit of a dick at the same time, I guess. See, I but... remember because we we both got it at the same time. We both went on Xbox Live and we um we sat in a party together while we played it, and. I think the first five minutes or ten minutes before you switched it off in a rage, you were just shouting and screaming um, because you hated it that much. <laughs> but, but I loved it. I thought it was a really, really good game. I know you said about the delay, that it did take a long time. I thought I can't remember how long it was in development. It was like four or five years or something silly, but every year it would just be, yeah, we delayed it again, we delayed it again. Um, but I'm, I'm glad they did. I, if, if, if it, you know, we got the game at the end and I thought it was awesome. I didn't actually play the DLC for it. Um, I know with the pre-order of Quantum Break, you now get uh, Alan Wake and the two expansions, which is quite a nice little perk. Um, so I'll be getting that. Um, but yeah, like it, t- it took a long time. But it ended it. It was a really good game. So Quantum Break, it's the same. It's a similar sort of uh, layout. It's really story-driven. Uh, it's a third person again. And the, main, and the main concept is time control. Um, you've got offensive and defensive time manipulation um, moves you can do. Um, but with it, I mean, you've got four 22-minute episodes, it says, uh, which sort of bridge the gap in the story in between like the missions you're playing. And I, I, th- I think that's quite a, new, a different concept. I mean, I, I'm the guy playing Fallout that will skip every dialogue. I mean, it did get repetitive anyway, but I, I can't be bothered to sit there and read and... and I'd rather just like watch something. So I, th- I think that's a bit better in that respect. Um, it's also uh, the end of each mission. They've said uh, you make a choice. So again, you'll get different endings. You'll get different responses depending on the choice you make, which I, which I like. I mean, it, it, it gives you that playability. Hopefully it's not just repetitive or the endings aren't very similar. But um, but I, I like that. I, I like a game I'm not going to play once and then never never touch again. I'm guessing with Alan Wake, George, you, you didn't play it again after you completed it. You just left it. Yeah, I just left it at that after. Yeah. But didn't they bring an expansion out after that? Oh, yeah, my, yeah they had two expansions. I can't remember the name. And I think they brought another game out. Um, I can't, it was American Horror or something. I can't remember that. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, 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 I'd just like, I just like what they, they're doing with it. And... I, th- I think they're, they're following how um, all the good points they have with Van Wake. I say it's the same creators as Emma um, Swackett going back to it, but I, I like what they're doing. I, I, I thought the trailer was awesome. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the first single player game that's really grabbed me since Fallout, which I know was only a few months ago, but they are so few and far between now, single player games. I don't know what it's like for you, Carl, on, on Nintendo, but it's, it's, it seems to be multiplayer more and more for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, Nintendo very much you'll get your local multiplayer that, you know, they've started doing the right things. And um, obviously Splatoon was the biggest kind of, uh, you know, example of them branching out. But yeah, you've got your single player. I mean, you know, the Bayonetta 2 was a, was a nice single player title. Um, I guess uh, the next big boy would be um, Legend of Zelda, Wii U, which is kind of, which we can talk about another day because I feel like we could definitely get some chat on that. But, um, but yeah. Not a lot going on right now. You've got Star Fox coming out, which apparently has no multiplayer. So we'll see. We'll see what they're doing with it. Yeah. Um, Jordan, I have interest. What was the last single player game you played? Uh, I'm very multiplayer based. So Is it the, asked, yeah, the, last, the, game the last memorable game that I played all the way through and really enjoyed and was Mafia 2, and that was a long time ago. So I'm waiting for Mafia 3, which we'll probably talk about another time as well. But Is that this um, I can't remember. I think it's out this year, or uh, well, yeah, I think it is out this year, or rumored to be, but there's no set release date. But I've seen a bit of gameplay for it, and that looks awesome as well. But I think yeah. Quantum, I will give Quantum Break a go myself as well, because it's n- nothing to do with Alan Wake at all. It's a totally new idea, and um, it does look good from what I've seen of it so far. I don't know enough of, about it, but I think it'll be interesting. But there's no yeah. multiplayer at all, is there? A, no, it's, it's purely single player, which. I mean, it's 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 weird, but it seems like a gamble now um, to make a single player game. But I mean, the success that Witcher Three had, the success that Fallout Four had last year, I can see why they're sort of coming back in. But 
I mean, Quantum Break was announced, I think, E3 2013. So a long time ago. It's, it's been delayed a couple of times already. So we should be getting a good game at the end of it in an ideal world. But I'm, I am really looking forward to it. I think it'll be good. It's out the 4th of April, I think I've got down here, on Xbox, PC and PlayStation 4. I thought it was an exclusive. Or is um, it not? Not according to what I've read, but I might have misread that now. I feel a bit silly. Oh, I no, know. I definitely, oh, yeah, I definitely read recently that Xbox players were upset because Quantum Break was not going to be um, Xbox exclusive, and I know it's definitely coming to PC. Oh yeah, so it's not PlayStation Four. My bad, my bad. PC and Xbox One. Yeah. Cool. Um, right, I've got quite a bit for this this last little section. I say it's a little section. I'm going to fire some questions at you guys. Um, we'll see how you get on. Question time. Okay. I hope so the first not, like, one. Difficult academic questions. Oh yeah. So uh, linear equations and things like that. Yeah. Awesome. Should be should be easy. Okay. The first one, George, because I know you're really excited about it. Batali in 1944. Batali 1944. Nearly said the year wrong then. Yeah. What What are you expecting from that? Um. <clears throat> From what I'm seeing of it, I'm very excited about it so far, and I've only, I've backed it as well on the Kickstarter. Um, how much did you? Lot, how much did you back it? Uh, it cost me twenty two pound, and that guarantees me a copy, a console copy of the game, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, they are putting some more stretch goals out, which means they'll um, tell people more. Well, I think once this thirty days is up, they'll tell people more of what they want to achieve, and then people will eventually pledge more money. Uh, but from the, the very, very early gameplay that I've seen, which people have been slagging down already when it's like only just coming into development, um, I think it'll be very good with the money they've already received. I think they've just got 220,000 in about yeah. 10 days. Uh, still about 20 days to go. So if they can sort of get up to maybe 400,000, that's quite a big budget. And they only initially wanted 100 grand. Um but they've promised uh, a, get, a World War Two shooter that um, is going back to the roots of games like Medal of Honor and Call of Duty 2 and Call of Duty 3, World at War, games like that. Uh, but without the stupid fly around bollocks and perks and all that kind of stuff, uh, they promised they're not going to fleece people for DLC and they're not going to... Um, anything that's added on will be purely cosmetic like sort of Rainbow Six where you can get skins for your weapons. It doesn't change mm. uh, the way people play. Uh, but, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to what they've still got. till They, they have announced May next year is what the, the day they want to release it or the month they want to release it. But if it goes beyond that point, I'm not too bothered because um, from what I've seen, it looks, looks good so far and it can only get better. Yeah. Um, my next question, then, not leading on from that. I mean, it, it, obviously, it's a Kickstarter project, so it was just quite, quite rare. Um, do, do you think this could be the future of games? Could people, I mean, where game companies are just churning out the same edition, like Call of Duty, like fifteen or whatever it is now? Could this be the way forward for more niche games? I mean, across all platforms. I mean, Nintendo seems to have the variety anyway, but. I mean, Xbox especially. Do you see this uh, in a future way of, of getting games out there? I definitely think so, because I think with shooters at the moment, well, for the past sort of seven or eight years, the only games that have dominated have been Battlefield and Call of Duty in the shooter market. And I think developers are really scared of putting something new out there because people are just stick to the same two shooters or won't invest in in a, another a shooter because of that. And I think Shenmue, which was announced at E3 last year, um, they announced the Kickstarter because everybody wanted a new Shenmue game. And I think they um, I think they ended up raising about £2 million in, in the space of 48 hours. Um, and they, to be fair, a lot of people asked for that. And with Battalion, uh, they only initially wanted a hundred grand, and a World War Two shooter hasn't been around for a while. So... For them to get what they've got already so quickly, it just shows how how um, Kickstarter can kick things off for smaller developers. And I think for games like like games like we used to play, like Time Splitters, which we'd love to see again, and that they are, there is um, some 
developers working on it off their own back. I think if they'd have done a Kickstarter, that that would have been even better for them. But I think I think it's definitely the way forward. And it, yeah. I think yeah. for the smaller developers, anyway. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be quite interested to see. I'd, I'd love to see more projects like this. Um, I am a bit skeptical on it. I mean, it's like you say, the original target was a hundred thousand. Is that enough to make a game? I mean, it, it just seems such a small amount when you, you know companies are spending a couple of million at a time. Yeah, I think um, they they said they put a hundred grand of their own money in. So uh, with the Kickstarter money, that would have been two hundred grand plus they raised a bit more. So the at the moment on three hundred and twenty grand, and I think I don't know what that kind of money covers them. I'm guessing that's to keep them going. Wait, like obviously pay the wages and. We had other game company go past on um because they were buying drinks and going out partying and stuff. So maybe they'll use it for that. <laughs> yeah, cocaine yeah, and strippers. It was on it later or whatever it was, what it was now, but that, that made me laugh. I did just put that in the small print. By the way, if we go over, we're spending it on hookers and coke. Just to let you know. <laughs> right. So next question. I was, I was going through the um the group, sort of having a look at some of the discussions we had before. I was, just, I was so interested. What was the first game that, that sort of made you get online in the first place? I know what Jordy's probably going to say, but what first got you going online? Uh, my um, first oh. game was Time Splitters. I don't know what yours was called. Yeah, okay. So I didn't. Um, we got we got the internet very late in comparison to everyone else. Uh, you know, not because we're poor. We just didn't have it. Um, but anyway, uh, believe it or not, it was not the greatest game ever. It was Fantasy uh, Fantasy Star Universe on Xbox 360. I played Fantasy Star Online. I don't know if anyone's played it. Hardly anyone I know has played it or even heard of it. It was originally um, a Dreamcast game. It was kind of the first, I guess you could rate it as like the first console MMO, but obviously Dreamcast capabilities, 56k dial-up. Uh, I played that offline, absolutely loved it. And when I knew there was a, you know, a version coming out on 360, I remember my mum was out in Bury St Edmunds and I called her and was like, can you get me an Xbox uh, Xbox Live membership? I also needed the wireless adapter and, uh, oh, and, yeah, and the headset and stuff. And it came to about 120 quid. And that was what first got me online. And it was probably still my most played 360 game. I think I probably put in about, it was just short of 800 hours into it. So Fantasy Star Universe was the game that got me uh, got me online. And then obviously... Uh, you know, everything else came after that. I do yeah. remember very early on being being really afraid of ranked matches. Wouldn't play ranked on gears. I don't know what I was expecting. Like everyone was going to be so well, much better uh, than me. But yeah, and then you play games like Call of Duty where you know, it wasn't ranked as such, but everything was the the same. You know, you just went into a match, and so I love a bit of ranked now. Anyway, uh, I'm also going to start with Geordie as well. Uh, time splitters for me is what got me online. Um, it was the third in the series, Future Perfect. Uh, first, obviously, went online, but it, 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 I just loved it. I think, I mean, I I, I thought I was amazing at it. I, I played offline. I had like hundreds of bots running about on easy, obviously. And I just I you know, smashed through them. And I, I thought I was amazing, and that's what made me think. I'll go online. I'll play like this. I'll be I'll be really good. But um, I'm glad I did. I don't, I'm glad it got me online. I wasn't as good as I thought it was, obviously. Um, But yeah, I, I know me and George. I was the same. Smash bots offline and think I'd do that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Like I mean, that was what 2004. I think that's where we met each other, wasn't it? Yeah. What 12 years ago now? Yeah. Um, Long time. I was paying for that interconnection with my paper round. I was 16, living in my mum's house. <laughs> I got an inter- I got an internet <laughs> line, my own phone line installed just to play that game online, and uh, I don't. Know that. Nice. That's like half my money every week going on that, but I loved it. That's that's commitment. I remember you had right. to uh, you had to screw a, a network adapter on the back of your PlayStation Two with a two. Yeah, point. With the, yeah, with little aerials out of it as well. It was great. Kids don't know what they've got these days. I tell no, you, exactly. They were in Wi-Fi. What's that? <laughs> um, right. Another one as well in the group I saw, which I thought was quite interesting. So we saw like everyone was posting like their greatest achievements. Um, What's like the most embarrassing thing you've done online? Like, if you, I mean, I'm talking like Jew golden people just to win a match, or not even doing that. Um, just just something silly that you've done in a game, just to 
sort of annoyed. I got them. done in. Um, I got done in on on Fantasy Star Universe, believe it or not. Okay, so you could have like open parties uh, with people and stuff. And anyway, I joined these guys, and they were like, "Oh," and I fell for it, didn't I? Oh, we're trying to do we're trying to do an item duplication uh, uh. like glitch, basically. And uh, so you have to do this and this and this. And obviously, they were just dropping extra of the item, even though it was quite a rare item. And they're like, "Drop such and such, and we'll make extra of it for you." And they booted me, didn't they? And then they locked the room, and I was heartbroken, basically. Apart oh, from that, nothing else that springs immediately to mind, which doesn't mean I haven't done anything else silly. But yeah, I do remember that. And then I just remember making it my mission to go out and get another of this item, which I did in the end. And yeah. I ended up a bit of a bit of a boss on it anyway. So jokes on them. Swings and roundabouts. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's certainly it for me. Well, if Geordie pitches something, I'll have a think. There's gotta be something else. How about you, George? Uh, not necessarily online this, but it is kind of. Uh, when FIFA 14 was around, um, I remember uh, basically everyone was getting on the 15 FIFA 15 beta, uh, and I I was jealous that everyone was playing it. So I went on Twitter and I, I tweeted EA and said, "Oh, what what have I got? To, what what have I got to do to get on this beta?" And then what I thought was EA uh, <laughs> tweeted me back and said, "Oh well, yeah, just follow this link and log in and oh, we'll speak God. to our advisors." So I followed the link and logged in with my details and it wasn't working. And I was like, what the fuck? Didn't think anything of it. And then three, four hours later, I go on to FIFA and realize that all my ultimate team cards have been (laughs) sold and all my coins have been fleeced out of my account. I lost probably a good few hundred pounds worth of... um, It's happened to you a few times. It has, but that, that time was my own my own fault and uh, yeah I felt like a right idiot afterwards and I was really really pissed off yeah. um, I I am like in terms of games I'm just that dick on Battlefield who will strap C4 to a helo wait for you to take off get nice and comfy and then blow it up I don't know why it's a guilty pleasure I like seeing people off <laughs> like seeing people having to swim miles miles and miles away Oh god! We used to, I think, I think we played with you, George, uh, Battlefield Three, and we used to, we used to get in a helicopter, just fly miles up the map, jump out, and just watch everyone get really upset. But that, I think that was in the days when people used to sort of get involved in game chat a lot more. And now everyone's in their parties; so they don't really sort of socialise as much. But there's nothing more satisfying than hearing someone scream down the mic. At you. Another one was FIFA, getting the ball and just sitting in the corner flag for ninety minutes. I, I think it's a, quite a good achievement if you can do it for ninety minutes, but. My God, people hate me. Yeah, I bet they do. But yeah, basically, I'm a dick online. <laughs> uh, Establish that much. If he invites you to have a game with him, just say no. <laughs> right. Uh, obviously, game of the year wide round was Witcher Three. Um, I never played it, but it did look good. I, I can see why why it snatched it from Fallout Four. Why have you not played it, Luke? What's I've going on? Time because it, it apparently it takes more time to complete than Fallout Four, and that took that took me ages. That's a game you'll have to get when you uh, when you're not online. Yeah, I've got my period in exile coming up. Um, but what for you guys was your game of the year last year? Oh, um, I'm trying to think. In terms of the game I played the most, would have been Smash Bros. Easily. Uh, which you know don't get me wrong I do think it's a great game I think it's a great technical achievement uh, certainly on the hardware that it's running on but in terms of you know pleasant surprises I'd still have to say it was Splatoon which I, I bang on yeah. about a lot obviously it did pick up multiplayer game of the year I just think it was great it was coming from you know a developer who hadn't done a shooter a proper shooter they had Geist on the GameCube anyone remember that? of course you don't uh, <laughs> that was on the GameCube Um you know, so it was a shooter, and you know the main focus was online, which for Nintendo just seems crazy. Yeah, uh, and obviously it had that. You know, it's just that Nintendo difference and charm, and I've just seen today, like you know, it's like I, I did I say in the previous one. You know, sold four million units on a twelve million install base <clears throat> is uh, is quite the achievement, and you've now got. There's manga coming out in Japan. There's toys coming out in America. Uh, was just confirmed today actually that there's going to be figures for it. So. Like I just think it was impressive that 
yeah for like you say for for an industry which you know is getting a bit stale people play it safe you get your you get your bloody your call of duties and stuff which do sell but i just think you're not really getting a new experience and for anyone who's played platoon i don't think you could liken it to anything you've played before because you know it really isn't so for me i would have to say splatoon <laughs> How about you, George? What 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 won it for you? Um, if I've got two here, really. If if I'd no. have played it more, the Witcher Three would have been my choice because it's fucking it is stunning, and I've not put enough time into it. But if if I'd have put more time into that game, it would have been my game of the year. But my game of the year last year, I'm going to go with Dying Light. <clears throat> um, just, yeah. Another game that I still need to go back to and finish, and I, I, I should have put more time yeah. into. But I think it's one of those games that a lot of people wouldn't have even looked at last year, and there's yeah. probably still a lot who all listen to this who haven't even played it. But very, very underrated game, and I, w- I, w- I would have gone with Rainbow Six, but I'm not going to because it came out too late in the year really yeah. to be called Game of the Year. But for me, it's a toss-up between The Witcher Three and Dying Light, um, and surprising for me because. Both not really multiplayer based games, no. even though there is multiplayer aspect on Dying Light. I did most of the stuff on my own on off, off offline. So yeah, I'm only going on that. Actually, but yeah, definitely. I, I love Dying Light. I love the um, sort of the parkour, the free running aspect of it. I thought the combat was interesting. It was good. I thought the story was a bit weak. Um, I thought I, I didn't care about the characters in the slightest. I thought, you know, if they died, I didn't care. Like, I had no interest. Um, you heartless bastard! I am. I, it takes yeah, a lot. Maybe that's think, the problem wow, that's, here. I think, um, besides Alan Wake, I think Ma- uh, Mass Effect Two was one of the games where I thought those characters are actually quite nice. I'd rather they didn't die. Um, but yeah, I think Fallout Four for me was was my favorite game last year, um, just on a whole game basis. Uh, but I mean, in terms of combat and and fun, uh, for me, Dying Light as well. I really really enjoyed it. Um, right, I've also got the so next one. Eurogamer. I know you've booked your ticket, Jordan. Uh, me and Colour booking ours soon, I think. Yes, yep. we are indeed. Um, so that's the 22nd of September to the 25th. £65 um, for, your, for your everyday pass uh, or, uh, and the access every day as well. Which I, I know you've been before, Jordan, and, and you'd recommend that because you, you were left waiting quite a lot, weren't you? Yeah, I didn't opt for the early access last year, and it was a big mistake. Really, really. <laughs> um, what would you say to people who've not heard of it before? How would you, what would you say? You know, convince them to go, sort of thing. I just think if you if you if you're into gaming as much as those guys are, and um, all you want to do when you get home from work or school, whatever you're doing, is want to all you want to do is game. It's definitely for you, and it. There's something there for everyone, not just for adults, but for kids as well. Um, I just think uh, last year, the only thing that let it down was uh, the amount of people queuing because it, yeah. it, it moved venues from London to Birmingham and they, I think they underestimated the amount of people going into the amount of screens that they had, but they have promised to uh, make that better this year. And I think that's why they've slightly increased the prices. They've promised to put more screens yeah. screens into the arena. That's, um, that's the only thing I worry about. I mean, I'd love to bring a little boy along because he's, he's sort of he's at the age where he's starting to sort of have an interest in games. Um, obviously, I'm being a massive geek, so it helps that, that he you know he likes that sort of stuff. But I, I know the waiting times would be the one thing that would ruin it for him if he had to wait two hours to play. I don't know, Peggle, but um, but you you reckon that's going to get better? Yeah, I think. They're really listening to people because they did put a survey out after this year and the main complaint was the queuing time. And You do expect to queue for things, but the queues last year, I think the Division the division and Star Wars were the main two games. Yeah. But... Um, and they were both... Uh, we queued two and a half hours to play Battlefront on the, on the first day. Um, and the Division was constantly three, hour, three hours to queue and... If you don't get the early access, you're only in the venue for seven hours. So if you're spending three hours of that queuing, yeah, that leaves you with four hours to go and explore everything else. So to go buy a hundred pound keyboard, yeah, or uh, <laughs> go and buy a nice big razor keyboard like I did. Um, <laughs> but even if even if you are queuing for say an hour and a half or something, it's still it's still 
um, something you've got to go and experience if you're into gaming. There's just there's 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 so much to do and see there if you've uh, if you don't want to queue as well. So yeah, definitely uh, worth looking at if yeah if you've got a bit of time off in September. So uh, for anyone interested, yeah, uh, so it's in on the twenty second of September to the twenty fifth um, in Birmingham. So it's not it's, it should be reasonably accessible for everyone. There's a few of us going, so if you if you come in, just give us a shout on the group or whatever. Be more than happy to sort of meet up and everything. Right, my my last question then. I've got it written down here. The beta for Homefront Two. <laughs> yeah. You're laughing already. Why was it so bad? Uh, I was just. I don't know if you two have played it, but oh, um, I played the first one. That's enough. It's just um, ah, it, it's it's frustrating because I I wanted this to be good after the the last one, which so like, I really like the concept. Uh, the concept is awesome, but it's, it's yeah. Extreme. I mean, the last one was a marmite kind of game. Yeah, I mean, you can pick up the if you want to play the last one, guys. You can pick it up for ninety nine p in game, and uh, you can make your own decision. <laughs> uh, you know, I hope it does good, but I mean, I hated the Rainbow Six later, and I'm playing it now. It's, it's a, it feels like a completely different game. Hopefully, they uh, listen to players and they and they make changes to Homefront too. But I think they've still got a few months till Homefront. They could they can still claw it back. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure but, what the release date is actually. But... My main my main gripe with it was when when you was running around with it, uh, running around on the game. It was like you was running through quicksand, but. That that could probably be fixed, um, but I didn't really generally get what I was doing in the beta. I think it was just kind of a co-op kind of mission, but I think it comes out in May. So. May sixteenth, yeah. That's, I mean, that's three months from now. It's probably enough time to make enough check, you know, major changes to it. I mean, I wouldn't even mind if they did, did, delayed it again. I know um, it it's been difficult because Crytek was originally developing it, and then. Uh, Crytek went bust, or the studio split apart, and then they handed it over to someone else halfway through. So, um, not, that's not quite sure. I don't think it's going to be a massive hit, but I think it'll probably still sell enough copies to do all right. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a time of the year when there won't be a lot of games coming out, and they've probably picked a, a good window. Yeah, for it to I, come out, I think it? I think for them it's, it's an ideal time. Um, I'll probably be done with Quantum Break by that point, so. I'm sure, I know Curtis Wells is a big fan of, of the series. If he can convince me, then who knows, maybe I'll give it a try. You managed to get me on Rainbow Six, so there's that. Right, we've got a couple of um, new releases coming out. I've still not played the, uh, the what's it called, Dying Light uh, expansion that was out recently, but I need to go on to that. Uh, but we've got Street Fighter uh, Five, which is out on the 16th of Feb tomorrow. Yeah, any of you getting that one? Uh, PS4 tempted tomorrow. Is it PS4 only? PS4 and PC. I don't. I think it's out the same day as on PC, isn't it? As far as I'm aware. I was thinking yeah, I think about picking it up on one or the other, but PC is a bit cheaper. But yeah. Um, Rocket League comes out on the seventeenth on Xbox One. Yeah, I know you're looking forward to that. It's been out on PC and PlayStation Four for a while, and I think they. I think. PC and PS4 can play cross-platform against each other on that. Uh, but Xbox is just going to be Xbox only, so... I'm well, surprised it doesn't happen more. I'm surprised there's not more platform stuff. I won't get into that now. Uh, we've also got Far Cry Primal out on the 23rd of Feb. Um, I kind of want to get it. kind of don't want to just play another Far Cry game. But it could be good. I'm not too convinced with the new Far Cry. No. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not overly feeling it. Like I've, I've, I've played the other ones a little bit. Um, you know, I guess you know. I'm sure they've made enough. I'm sure it'll be it'll be half decent at least, but not necessarily for me in terms of you know in terms of gameplay and stuff. I know. I know the last one. My, a friend of mine uh, was playing through it while I was playing Sonic House, but um, it always sort of you say it's no, it's really good. You know, this is this is interesting. It looks incredibly repetitive from where I was sitting. Until one day he finished the game and he shouted "What the fuck" and slammed it down. Never touched it again. So that was enough for me to not not bother playing. <laughs> um, and the last one we've got down here is, is probably Jordan's favourite game ever, 
Plants vs Zombies 2. Yeah, man, big fan. Um, I'm guessing you've already pre-ordered that. Yeah, I've pre-ordered it, and if you're on EA Access, you'll get uh, 10 hours gameplay, probably around the 19th, 20th. So anyone with EA Access can try it out for 10 hours. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think that's pretty much it. But basically, I also wanted to thank um, everyone in the FIFA, uh, the FIFA tournament. That's all finished now. Uh, Nico Baines won that. Well done, mate. Won five 0 in the final. I think to date against Dave oh, Rowe. Bloody hell! What happened, Dave? What happens? That's what happens when I don't play FIFA. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been double. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks again for everyone getting involved. Uh, I think the the league will be kicking off soon, ish. I'll also be doing a, a Euro tournament uh, closer to sort of May June time when I'm back online. I've got a bit of an exile coming up. I'm just going to be offline for about two months, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, has anyone else got anything to add? I think that's it from me. Yeah, I don't think so. If you can think of any topics or questions, just we'll obviously get this posted up, a link to it in the group. If you've made it this far, yeah, just hit us up with some suggestions. Obviously, there's still a bit of a, a bit of a learning for all of us. So if you want to know something about us or, you know, a gaming story, because I've definitely got some great gaming stories I could share. Uh, yeah, just hit us up with a few ideas. If there's a game you want us to talk about, let us know, and we shall try and deliver. Obviously, we won't be able to cover everything if there's a lot of responses, but do let us know, and we'll do what we can for you. Yeah. Um, obviously... I think the success of these podcasts are down to you guys getting involved. So, again, feel free to drop us a message, any of us uh, on the page, or just or just post it on the wall, we'll see it. So, yeah, thanks for listening. We've been Jordy, James, and myself, Luke, and we'll get another podcast out there soon. Cheers.